will be respectful. Thank you. And I'm go I've got Facebook Live going too. So be respectful. There we go. It happens, buddy. There we go. Just, just, Michael, just keep in mind that I've got this on Facebook Live. I might put it over here. Yeah. I love 
And after that, saith the Lord, in a short time, you will see me face to face. Therefore, be filled with my spirit this day, saith your Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let's say it, Lord, do you ever find yourself where you just don't have a thought that your mind is unoccupied? Well, I would encourage you, say it, the Lord, as the scripture says, to pray in the spirit and to fill yourself up, because this world wants to fill you up, say it, the Lord. But this world will take your energy and will tap not just off of just your body and wear you out, but also spiritually, say it, the Lord. So don't let the be on a diet of what the world wants to put into your mind, your heart, your spirit, say it, Lord. But rather, tap into those things that I would serve you daily, let's say it, the Lord. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's say the Lord, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise up a standard against him on your behalf. You will not have to fight your battle. You will just have to watch and praise me. This saith the Lord. Jesus.
flow, SLOW, was flashing on that sign. And I just believe that there's someone here that is in the process of making a decision. And you should take it slow, easy, and listen for the word of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Whatever things are lovely, if there's any virtue, 
when everything's our good report. And if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learn and receive and heard and sown in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Yes, the God of peace will be with you. What Jesus said, we can know it's true. Surely I am with you always to the very end. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are true, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, if there's any virtue, whatever things are a good report. And if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learn. And receive and heard and sown in me these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Yes, the God of peace will be with you. What Jesus said. We can know it's true, surely I am with you, always to the very end of the thinking on negative things. That's his goal, is to steal, kill, and destroy. But God wants us to think on positive things. So keep trying. Amen. 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 Alrighty. It's a hot mic, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, is this too loud? No. Are you shaking my work? Okay. Um, oh, you raised your hand. Testimony, come on. Come on up right here. Whoops. Oh, well. I don't know. The Lord just touches me and said, Go, you rejoice today with the Lord. Is that okay? Yes, this song is actually by Mandessa. I know that you guys know this song, Aww. right? Uh, I know she passed away, but reading her biography touches me and all the songs that she had actually. Uh, it's my motivation every day, every time that I have pain in my heart. Yeah. Or if I'm going through a tough time. Oh, and something that I cannot say to my husband or anybody. I just talk to the Lord and say, Lord, please come with me and strengthen me. Oh, because life is not easy, but the Lord, is, he, gives you, he gives you the energy. He is the power. He is the energy that provides me the energy to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward with a struggle in life because I know how people can live without the Lord. You know? yeah. Because I know for a fact that without Him, I won't be here. That's why I was trying to prophesy to all of you that, like you, Derek, and Brittany, I used to be in your position. 
as I was, you know, back in the 90s. I had to walk from Noblesville all the way to Sheridan just to find a job. Yeah. From Georgetown, 38th Street, all the way to, to uh, Carmel just to get a job. Yeah. I had struggled a lot. Struggle that makes me strong because I know the Lord was with me. My struggle did stop. When I was in the Philippines, you all know already my history about that, that 12 years old, I was already struggling in my life. From being young, away from the family, where I don't have a place to stay, I have to move forward because I know the Lord touches me. I am the Lord's special child that yeah. He gave me the energy to move forward. And that's why he said, whatever blessings he provided to me, I tried to impart as much as I can. And I know that the energy I have is from him too. I'm going to attack them at work sometimes, but I know that this is another month again. It's going to be another late night again. But I know the Lord is helping me. And as I said, sometimes me and my husband and mom, I struggle. My husband struggled because they have the a mom, but I know the Lord is with me. He is keeping yeah. me motivated. Yes. Yeah. And He is here always. And that's why I said every Sunday and every time that I'm going through a tough time, I will get my phone and sing and have all these songs like God's Not Dead, Mandeza, Face to Face, Our Lord, you know. So that's why. And I don't know what. I just, I didn't learn this to be here today, you know, to say something, but praise God. Praise God. I just oh, thought that, because this is like my motivation all the time, you know. I am an overcomer yeah. because the Lord was the one yeah. that motivated me to go forward, whatever the life, whatever journey in this world that we have. That's why anytime that I get a chance, I try to tell my friends without Jesus. You won't survive. Yeah. This is the time for you to come closer to him and be serious about it and be yeah. accept him into your life. Yeah. Not just say it, but do some actions about it. Yeah. Come unto him, pray to him. If you're going through a tough time, you know, I know sometimes it's hard. You're going through sickness, you don't have a ride, you don't have a place to stay, you don't have a job. Pray earnestly to the Lord. Because he will teach, he will touch you, he will guide you, he will test you. But if you keep strong to him, if you are keep the eye on him and just believe that he is going to keep you safe at all times. Yes, I'll because be he will. Because with him, I'm going to attack them. That's why sometimes my husband would say it's not safe in there. But I'm like. Adventures, it is not because of it, it's because I believe in the power of the Lord and the blood of the Lamb that I am protected by Him yes. wherever I go. Amen. He protects me, yes. He is my protector, and that's why I'm always this overcomer wherever I go. I Amen. always Amen. just Amen. go, go, go because the Lord is yes. my strength. Yeah, yes, Amen. thank you, Amen. sir. Amen. Amen.
talks about Satan, it talks about the beast, it talks about the Antichrist, he goes into the temple, okay, to simplify it, he goes into the temple, there had been a peace agreement made during that week, and then he goes in uh, the Jewish temple, which actually there is no functioning temple right now, okay, uh, from what I have looked for, gathered, whatever, there are not daily sacrifices going on in Jerusalem, so there's a few things that need to happen. But we want to know, kind of like what I was saying, we want to know what to look for. Okay? And I also, I want to know what other people will be doing, and I want to know what God would want me to be doing. Amen. 
So when I understand what God wants me to do, then I have a lot of confidence. Amen. And, you know, you could label confidence as, well, as long as you have instructions, Jesus. You're just kind of being lazy. You're not being creative. You're not being bold, j jumping into the fray. Because we've seen a lot of movies, right? It seems like the smart person, the uh, hero, is always somebody who does something totally unplanned. Our God is not like that. Our God has a plan. Okay? Okay. So you got the seven years that you're going to hear about. Three and a half years of tribulation, then the next three and a half years, great tribulation. Well, there's a line right down the middle there. Okay. Well, that line right down the middle on the timeline, okay, it describes in Revelation 11 how my two witnesses, and that word witnesses, I looked at a reference in my Bible here, and it refers to more than just, it's not two people. If you ever heard that the two witnesses are two people, it's not what my Bible shows. Okay? We believe that we will be part of the two witnesses. It could be the streets of Jerusalem or wherever it might be. And we're going to be hassled for three and a half years. Hassled, some of us, you know, to the point of death. Now, death is a scary word. It really is, isn't it? Does yeah. it scare you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this split second, I'm ready to go. This world's not my own, I'm just a passing through. I'm ready to check out. Because I'm too lazy otherwise, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our Christian walk is so interesting because our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit, has such an investment in us. Okay, so I took a quick look at the definitions of three things, three things you might hear about, especially two of them. There's uh, pre-tribulation theory, there is mid-tribulation, and there's post-tribulation. I'm talking about mid-tribulation. So when you're in, if you're in a conversation, somebody says, well, I believe in the pre-trib. Okay, I looked in, in, in my scriptures here. Okay? Now, pre-trib states rapture occurs at an unknown. What's rapture? You get snatched up and you fly away. Okay? I believe in a rapture. Rapture occurs at an unknown time before the midpoint of the seven years of tribulation. Amen. Okay? Many use this first use 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 to believe God has destined us to be kept from wrath. From wrath. No trouble. You know me. I'll throw out the words Walt Disney. In a Walt Disney world, we ultimately don't have responsibility and we ultimately don't have problems. Yeah. And the problems yeah. we have are all temporary. So get your popcorn and anything else you need to have. Okay, but God knows. We know that God hates sin. And there are people who speak, believe, oh Lord, just the news, right? Not just that people are speaking against the country of Israel, but they're speaking against God. They're speaking against his scriptures and his promises. Amen. Amen. And yeah. so there's those who honor God and there are those who are wicked. Gene, that's not nice. You can't call people wicked. There's wickedness on this earth. Yes. And I'm sure I haven't even heard of or seen the very deep wickedness that actually goes on. Okay? But God is going to clean this up. Okay. So in the pre-trib, let's see here. They like to lean on this verse. 1 Thessalonians 5.9.
Namaste. Thessalonians 5.9 For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay. Uh, I believe that scripture. Okay. But to believe that at some random time, and I'm being, I'm trying to be very careful with what I'm saying. God can do anything he wants to do. But to hold tight to the fact that everybody who is following on the things of the Lord, that there will be no wrath, no problems, I don't see it. So if you're hanging on to just one verse, okay, that says no wrath whatsoever, I'm not sold on that. Okay? Amen. And I think that our eternity is more important than just maybe pulling over on the on the exit that would be like this and that's it okay i just want to say that um, in my heart it's like god if you want me to suffer trouble it's like help me but i will yeah i will you know if, if i'm threatened with death help me but i will and, you know, that's kind of a scary thing to even talk about because we have news with all, all this wickedness and such going on. Okay. So, mid-tribulation, the saints will go through the first three-and-a-half-year period, but will be... And, and, and this that I'm reading here, it, it's from the Internet, but it was pretty clear. Okay. Uh, Saints will go through the first period of three and a half years, but will be raptured into heaven before the severe outpouring of God's wrath in the second half of those seven years, called Great Tribulation. Okay. Now, Jesus. I love Jesus. Thank you. Everybody want to be like Jesus? Yes. That's a trick question. It's a tricky. Well, you know how Jesus was treated. And you know that they murdered him. Yeah, right. And what else happened? He rose from the dead. We're promised an eternity. Not the next box of popcorn in a movie. That's right. So it's, it's sad to think about it, but then the things that I love in life have less to do with what my paycheck covers. <laughs> okay. And so let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 4. We're right there. Hey. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, I'm going to teach you how to do this like it work, but I'm not going to have you do anything that I haven't done myself. Amen. And that's usually a wise thing. Okay. So therefore, what did Jesus do? Okay. I want to please the Lord. Now, if I sound silly at times, and uh, it's probably my, my way to, to balance out things that are sad, evil, and whatnot, and mm -hmm. just for a moment. Okay. Okay, so when these things happen, it's right at the very end of those first three and a half years. Dead or alive, rapture. 
your option was. If that's what you wanted, there it is, that's what I want. Okay, now the post-trib, tribulation gathering of the saints, physician believes there is a resurrection of both dead and living believers in Jesus Christ at the end of the age, the end time, the end of the seven years. Okay. Um, there's not there's not that enough scripture there to to sell me on that because you've got the great tribulation the second three and a half years. Okay. Now I want to pull back for a moment and I was thinking of this when you got a timeline you got Adam to Abraham. Okay. And that's like twenty generations. And then you've got Abraham to Jesus. And then you got Jesus to basically now. Okay? Now in this timeline, it can go on to show the seven years of tribulation and then a thousand year reign where Satan is chained up. Okay? So, uh, my, what I noted here between Adam and Abraham, what's significant is in Genesis 4.26. Let's go here. So, what is God doing through all these years? Here we have a Bible. People are living. People are doing. Living and dying. What's the plan? Here? So, let's see. Genesis 4. 26. Adam and Eve, and they had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain slew Abel. Adam and Eve came back together. They had a son, Seth. Okay? Verse 26, And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. And men began to call on the name of the Lord. So Seth taught his family to follow the Lord. So at a point in history, God had an influence on his creation. Okay. You know, Seth called on the name of the Lord. Praise God. And then Noah is in between Adam and Abraham. And we know what happened there. They built that big boat. And they were honoring God. You know what we're doing here today? We're doing history. Amen. There may not be any record in the book or whatnot, but this is history. Every one of us is so important to our Creator. The Lord thinks about us all the time. We don't have to show up on the pages of the Bible. Okay. But we're very precious. Genesis 22, verse 10. God's always doing something. He's always got a problem. All right. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Do you know where I'm at? Mm -hmm. Father was told by God to put his son on an altar to slay him. There was no sacrifice available. Verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. What does that sound like? That sounds like God. God did not withhold his son. Amen. So in the Old Testament, it's got these scriptures that are pointing us to Jesus Christ. And it keeps on going, no matter of all the wickedness and, and wrath and such that it can be in the world. 
So Isaac was nearly a sacrifice. Praise God. Let's go to Luke 4. Verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture, scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. And that was Jesus reading in the synagogue as was custom for the scriptures to be read. So it was fulfilled. That was the first time. That was the time for it to be fulfilled. God does not just have a historical uh, book and he's just printing books if you want to say that. God's purposes are written in our hearts. And, and that, that's exciting, the wonderful thing. Okay. And let's look at Romans 9.24. So I mentioned views of and, and such on end times where there's going to be trouble. But in looking back at Adam and Eve and Seth and Noah and Abraham and Isaac, his son, and then here with Jesus, it's like God wins. He really does. Okay. Uh, Romans 9, 24. Romans 9, 24. We'll start at verse 22. What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessel's wrath, prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy? Oh, there's no vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory, even of us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. There's the other math I like. Like, like it says in otherwise in Romans, to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. I did the math. One and one equals two. That's everybody. There's nobody left out. No one. At all. No one on the face of the earth will have an excuse if they didn't accept Jesus into their life to be led. Okay, praise God. And also, uh, that's significant, too, because Jesus, being a Jew, he was doing what he was supposed to do, and uh, his disciples, his apostles, did go to the Jews first, and then, then to the Gentiles. And that Holy Spirit, that wonderful Holy Spirit, it just pours out. You know, and that other verse that says, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile. You know, tall, short, young, old. Everybody. Okay, let's, let's hold up. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. We've got a little battery for Maria over here. Well, that's not her fault. Tell her I'm on Facebook Live. She can look on my time. Maria. Deborah's on Facebook Live. Okay, she gets the thumb up. There we go. 
Okay. Okay. I also want to look back uh, a couple thousand years ago. Let's go to the book of Revelation. talking about what's going on in heaven. What's going on on earth and what's going on in heaven. Because when the Antichrist goes into the temple after the peace agreement is put together, declares that he is God, him to be worshipped. Okay? Uh, He goes into the temple and so all worship, all sacrifice is in. Okay? So the temple is no longer a temple. Okay? There's a lot of spiritual things in heavenly places that are gone. So I'm reading here in Revelation 7, first eight verses. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And then all those tribes are named off of Okay. Now let's go to Revelation 12. So, you know, being raised in the Methodist church, there was hardly anything of Old Testament that was ever shared at all. So, if I have an interest in what's going on in heavenly places, it's because uh, it's like half my life I never heard anything about it. And if God is so big and powerful, then um, I'd like to know how he does it. You know? Amen. So uh, that's marvelous. Uh, Revelation 12, 1 through 4. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and her head, on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and the seven diadems on his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Okay. All right. There we go. So in heavenly places, there are a lot of things going on. lot of scripture on this <laughs> So streamlining this may not always flesh out as a streamline. My apologies if I'm bouncing around. Okay, Luke 21. And uh, verses 19 to 36. I'm especially looking at Luke 21, 19, 28, and 36. By your patience, possess your souls. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that its desolation is near it. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. 
So woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I never even thought about the heavens and the powers of the heavens. Okay. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Can you imagine that? I can imagine a cloud. I, we see clouds move left to right. Not so much up and down. Amen, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves the summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. Oh. <coughs> So, if I'm all frustrated because of the news I hear, I could be become a carouser and get my mind off of the events that are happening and the truth that God has in me. I could get drunk. Mm -hmm. I could allow cares of life to stack up and distract me. Mm -hmm. That's why it would be unexpected. Because I'm willfully distracted. So I guess you could say willfully and woefully distracted. There we go. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, so Jesus is coming. Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10, verse 18. So if there's going to be trouble, what are you going to do? The Lord. Lauren, Lord. if there's somebody in your face saying, are you Christian? Are you really a Christian? Yes. <laughs> what if they threaten you with bodily harm? Okay, stop thinking. Yeah. Okay. I just should be playing. I have this imagination that God has my back. You know what I mean? Yes. And am I a sinner? I am a sinner. I'm not bragging about sin, but but God is a forgiver. That's right. And He wants us to hang with Him. I really don't care about CNN, but, you know, does it sound reasonable that these media outlets are basically a propaganda organization putting out this bad news to steer us toward believing a lie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One, one, whoever the guy was, uh, a famous communist uh, socialist in Europe, whoever he was, he said something... If you tell a lie long enough, Nancy, what's the rest of it? The people will believe it. Believe it as truth. Wow. And honestly, I'm just 
I'm not reading the scripture and speaking, you know, for these two, three seconds. But scripture does say that people believe the lie. I do not want to believe a lie. Not at all. If it's a reflection on work I've done, I just say that when I started out in the sheet metal trade, there are a lot of rough-edged guys, and they would say a lot of wrong stuff that should never, ever be repeated. And there'd be the good old boys, and uh, they would try and get you fired or laid off, and it just was not friendly. But then the Lord being with me, right? Well, therefore, I did my part doing my work as well as I could and becoming better. But it's that I knew the Lord, once again, he had my back. And he was with me. And so you know what happens when, when you do that? Understanding I was away from that work for ten and a half years and then I went back because they were they have a lot of work they need to bring people back. So I walk into the uh, morning meeting space at Eli Lilly, and there's this one guy who says, Gene Doctor, you remember me? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Ned. <laughs> Ned. But what I didn't realize, and there are like seven or eight people that remembered me, they remembered good things about me. All I know is I was kind of fighting a fight to do a good job and not participate in you know, their thoughts and what they were saying. But if there was the right character being portrayed, I, I would not have predicted that I had a testimony. The Lord had a testimony. Amen. So everybody here has a testimony. God. Everybody. So you have a testimony in the presence of evil, in the presence of wrath, all of that. But it takes every day, whether it's a really good day or not so good day. I mean, you could have a good day at a federal building. Right, Clay? Right, Shane? Oh. There is a, what, what is the phrase here? Whether it's Eli Lilly or uh, the FBI building downtown or Fort Benjamin Harrison, there's a, a corporate culture there. And sometimes it's suffocating. You just know they don't want you to say some things. They know. You just know they don't want you to do some things. You're better off not expressing yourself and being an individual. I've been around that. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> yeah. So, as I was working, side note, as this past week, I was working in this hallway at EJ Bean, uh, where Shane works. I just come down from the ladder, setting something on the floor, and I hear this voice. Uncle Gene, is that you? And it was my niece, Sophia. Aww. And so, you know, it's like, uh, forget protocol, I'm giving you a hug. Now, actually, I didn't hug her. I said, I was about to give her a hug, but I had this yellow insulation on me. So I said, how about a fist bump? You know. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, the Lord wants us, therefore, just to be who he's making us. Amen. We don't have to recreate. Okay? So, yeah. So we were... Matthew 10, verse 18. You'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Oh, I don't know what to wear. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that same hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. What do you think of that? Thank God. You could have a fifth grade education, right, Kevin? <laughs> Definitely. Jeffrey will need that. Yeah. Okay, verse 21. 
Now a brother will deliver a brother to death, a father's child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Will be saved. And you might have suffered some wrath for just being who you are, what Jesus has put as you put in your heart. So but to be willing to die for who you are, what Christ has put in you, Amen. I'm going to say yes, because it will be the Lord Jesus Christ who will put into me what I should know, which I, I should embrace. There are stories about, about people who have been martyred, people who have uh, had dreams, okay? And uh, Leslie read me, uh, this fellow had his dream, okay? And... Uh, Oof. Anyways, the dream the Lord gave him was that he was beheaded. But before the knife could touch his skin, he was in heaven. Now, I apologize if that's too creepy. Okay, I'm sorry if that is too creepy. But it's the God that hold, it's God that holds the warranty in our life. Amen. You know, uh, the Indian culture evidently has. Uh, a mindset or whatever that they would die honorably. Now, I was raised a Methodist, not an Indian. Okay? <laughs> but I always thought that sounded so honorable to, to die honorably. Yeah. But I look at these holy scriptures that my day of duty is to serve my God, to seek Him out, to spend time in the Holy Spirit. And that day will be fine. It might not be a good day, but that day will be fine. Okay. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 9. Yesterday at work, there was a company truck, and, and that guy and I are getting all this extra stuff from the job site onto the company truck, and there was a third person at the loading dock, and he said something, and then I said something about, oh, we've got a family, and da, da 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 And then I expressed, you know, how I also have a family, and God's been really good to us. Then there was another thought, and then another thought. And so the fellow from the shop, driving the truck, he said, Gene, I just want to know where that all came from. <laughs> And I said, well, that other guy mentioned his family. And so that's why I mentioned about God being so kind to my family. Yeah. And is kind to your family. That's right. You know, he goes, oh, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matthew 24. Verse 9. Ooh, wait a minute. We'll go to verse 7. For nation, Matthew 24, 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, do you think some of those things have happened in the last couple years? Yeah. Verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, and then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Okay, stop right there. So, uh, some people follow God and, and hear from the Holy Spirit, and other people are fed a different diet. This creates a lot of thoughts. Do we take it personally? Do we get mad? Do we stomp off? I would hope that I'm praying in a nanosecond. Does that make sense? Praying. It's like, dear Jesus. You know, I don't want to say something that's wrong. I don't want to do something that's wrong. Amen. Yeah. But my confidence is that in small things, today, tomorrow, we do. That is honorable and correct that the 
Holy Spirit has led us to do, amazing things happen. Amazing things. Okay. Uh, let us go to Mark 13. So it appears that it could have, it could look like I'm talking about what God does and then what I feel is responsible to be obedient to do. What I do, what God does. God's the one with the plan. God's the one with the timing. Each day we have here is just a preparation. And that's all it is. Okay. So... Mark 13, verse 9. Once again, these are the beginning of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils. Who's been delivered up to a council? Not me. Tony. Oh, Tony. Stu, have you ever been delivered up to a council? principal's office. <laughs> uh, were you bored? Bored of education. That's real living there, Stu. It really is. Well, Stu, you know, the council thing that comes to my mind is you and Lisa had invited me because you had a property on the corner and there were neighborhoods and they wanted to have clarification that you guys wouldn't sell beeswax on the corner, right? <laughs> and so what I'm saying is that here is this town hall meeting, and it's a zoning topic, okay? It's kind of dumb and down. And so I was a, a witness for them, you know, about their character and such and such. But you got two sides of the room. You've got the five people, and Stu and Lisa over here. And me. And then you've got this site filled to capacity with people who live in three different neighborhoods. And there's probably two lawyers, including their cup cadet lawyer that they have on the homeowners association. Okay. I mean, okay. I think it sounds funny, so I'm not trying to be really rude. But this young lawyer was like the Barney Fife of lawyers. Okay. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but the mood in that room, when I say council, therefore, there was a weight. You could feel an angst. You could feel a hate directed over to the owners of that corner property. And I mean, I felt it. It's like, I mean, it, it was like, demonic, is that? I don't know, Stu. Snowball and hate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There were, if nothing else, there were a lot of angry people. You know, maybe they were told a false version of what was actually facts that you could put on the left side and right side of the page. Mm -hmm. You know, but that was a council. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they did get around about it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, no, honestly, I had never felt uh, the anger in a room that was that thick before. Mm. Ever, ever. I was almost kind of like shaking a little bit. It's mm -hmm. like, what's the deal? You know, just say what you need to say and let's, let's go home. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. 13 9. Well, watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. Well, uh, we do know somebody who go to church with uh, two people who've been put before councils in Ethiopia. Yeah. So, yeah. So it can happen. It can happen. Okay, Luke 21. I was there. Excuse me. Uh, verse 12. Let's go.
But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. I, I think uh, maybe a small practical thing about it, because, duh, outside of anybody else, I, I think about these things on my own, right? So if I'm being drugged around the county, there in Boone County, I'm being blamed and talked down to and whatever, you know, there can be the inconvenience. And it's like, well, I need to get home and go to bed. i got to work tomorrow. But your life is being turned upside down. Yeah. Well, I still claim, as Scripture says, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us. And God is going to take care of what's going on. Paul, is it fair to say that you will always live at the address you live at right now? That's fair to say for conventional now. Right. So I don't expect Leslie and I are going to live at 315 South West Street in Thorntown, Indiana, 46071 for the rest of our lives in terms of seeing these kind of scriptures things will change. I'm not asking them to come quickly. But it's almost like I am proud of my dad. You know, it's like my daddy can beat up your dad. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I ever said that to anybody when I was a kid, by the way. The closest I came was uh, probably in sixth grade, leaving elementary school, walking down the street, and then uh, just walking home, you know. And there's the alley, there's the utility pole. My dad worked for the telephone company, and I hear this voice, gee, gee. And it was my dad. Aww, and, and, and there's my friends, and it's like, I didn't care what you think about the word daddy. Daddy, how are you? Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. So... Yeah, Daddy. John 16. Now, in the spirit of these, this encouragement, I hope this is encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a little scary time, but it should be encouragement, is that we are changing. And Lord willing, we are changing today. That in our heart of hearts, that peace that passes all understanding, reaching into those little dark, scary spots Amen. that we don't like to talk about, that we actually hug that little fear more than we do the hope that we see in Scripture. Because mm. I think those little fears, those little moments that some people would embrace as their personality. You know, something like that. It's a distraction, and it gets in the way of our hearing, you know, of hearing the Lord. So, my dad is very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said John 16. First one. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. Stumble. Stumble means you didn't even fall. You didn't scuff up your elbow. You might have been embarrassed for a moment. But you know, some people stumble all the time. And it, it's a... And every once in a while, I, I see somebody who has their head hanging down all the time. And there's just that uh, haranguing thought they have that just keeps whispering whatever it takes to to have them sad, to have mm. them distracted. Yeah. And so in this culture we live in, it's not a Christian culture. It's really easy to stumble. It's really easy to not embrace that our God has this Bible for us. Some people do not embrace the Bible. They do not embrace our testimony. Mm. So I don't live in a bubble. 
to where everybody agrees with me. That's right. Now, sometimes I speak to people like they already agree with me. And I'll see that look on their face like, uh, you said, what? And then I just explain myself. Okay. Uh, John 16, verse 1. These things I have spoken to you, and you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming when whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now, red letter here. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, that Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The ruler of this world is judged. How many people believe that? If you believe that, raise your hand. What was that again? of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Satan. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. All right. And then let's go to... Okay. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Verses, uh, right, right, right. And it reads, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin revealed, the son of perdition, the son of destruction, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, this right here, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple, showing himself that he is God. To me, it's almost like that's unbelievable. You're telling me somebody's going to walk into this Jewish temple, that is constructed with all this detail that makes it according to the uh, construction details for holiness. I guess I'll put it that way. And with all the efforts to make it a holy place, he's just going to walk in there. I mean, in general, he's just going to walk in there. Okay? Uh, that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what was told us, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness, doth already work. Only he who now letteth, who hinders, will let until he be taken out of the way. Taken out of the way. Gene, are you talking about Three and a half years, and then there's that timeline before the second three and a half. Are you talking about the tribulation, three and a half years, reset for another three and a half years for great tribulation? Okay, so with this line down the middle here, just prior to it, there were these people. Okay. That uh, were hindering the work of the Antichrist. 
the beast. All that. And then that wicked one. Then, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and blind wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness of them that perish. Ooh, of them that perish. That sounds like a list, doesn't it? Some people are going to perish. Do I want to be on that list? No. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Okay. There are those that perish and those that receive the love of the truth. Who here has received the love of the truth? Yes. That's a good list. I'll keep hanging out with you guys. <laughs> okay. Because they receive. Okay. And for this cause, God shall. With all deceitfulness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They have a chance to be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion, that they should believe a lot. That they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Does that verb damn carry weight with you? To me, that's a heavy word. To think that I could make decisions and I would bring damnation on myself. Ouch. I know there are people who are, are preachers and they, they shout the truth and everything. And they'll throw out the word damnation. And they're not lying. They're just reading scripture. But I do not want to be Damn. Amen. Yes. Yep. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. God does not want us to be damned. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Let's see. What does he want? It's right here. He wants that we continue on in the love of the truth. Day by day by day. So... I guess if you uh, want to name this message, my daddy's bigger than your dad. You know, the Holy Spirit leads you to open your mouth and talk, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm not saying that this was all exactly planned and I actually had too much information. Paul, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Tony, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. TMI. And you can do it to yourself. <laughs> you really can't. But I am convinced that our God is so able, I'm repeating myself, right? That there's no problem going on right now. No distraction. So big that if we ask the Lord into that little uh, shady spot that might appear to be comfortable, that he will come in with his Holy Spirit, his ministering angels, and light will shine in that spot. Like that. Does anybody want to have uh, prayer? And we'll just agree with you that the Lord will bring light into that shadowy spot, whatever it is. Okay, anybody else? Come on, Pat. Okay, we'll have Pat come up and 50 of her closest friends. <laughs> if you guys have any prayer requests, leave a comment in the comment section. And we will lift that up in prayer before the Lord. Let's say louder. You mean it's going to go away? It, my side's just going to shine. 
there'll be a moving truck show up. Yeah. Yes. And it'll be gone? It will. Well, would you like all of it to be gone? Okay. Well, why don't we have God send just the right side of the moving truck? That sound all right? Does everybody here believe that God can deliver past? Yes. From that yes. Ornery, shadowy spot that wants to draw attention and suck and and suck up her, her spiritual juices. That's right. Doesn't belong to you. Amen. Can you feel like God's delivering you right now? We haven't even officially prayed. Yes. Holy. Just talking about it? The confession is made on the salvation. Yes. Yeah. Lord God. Jesus, thank you for this thing. Lord, you know specifically. How uh, that might be affected. I call it a little shadowy spot that might want to be claimed as personality and as sadness, it's pressure, it's wrath, it's evil, whatever it is. But Lord, by your spirit, yes. your spirit is welcome here, Lord God. It's welcome wherever Pat is. Yes, thank you. And that you would fill in that spot, it would be swept. And it would be furnished, and Lord, that your Holy Spirit would take residence of that real estate right there. Get away. And Pat has no right to go back there. No. Yes. That's right. We just bless your holy name. Yes, Jesus. Thank you so much. Okay. So, what else is there? I have no thoughts for you. I'm going to ask you. What else? Testimony. Testimony. What else? God is true. God is true. God is true. That's real.
Stay and play for a little bit longer, but I'm worn out. Okay. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching.